Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Quran Weekly. This is your brother Omar Suleiman. Welcome back to the Superstar series as we're starting off with the 10 Promised Paradise. You know, you might have somebody in your family that you're really proud of, like your dad, your mom, your uncle, your husband, your wife, your kids, brother, sister maybe, maybe your local imam, or maybe not. But the point is, is that the Prophet Wasallam used to brag about one particular person in his family. He said, let he who has someone that he looks up to, look at who my uncle is. My uncle is Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas anhu. The Prophet Wasallam loved this man. He adored him Wasallam, and he counted him from those who were guaranteed as the 10 promised paradise. And on top of that, Sa'd anhu was given the guarantee of paradise on more than one occasion. So he was given the guarantee of paradise in the Battle of Badr. The Prophet Wasallam once guaranteed him paradise individually. And the Prophet ﷺ gave Sa'id a very, very special gift. The Prophet ﷺ made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept Sa'id's dua. So everything Sa'id would make dua for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would answer his dua. Now, you might wonder, how is it that a person can have that special quality? And by the way, it's a proven quality. In fact, the Sahaba were afraid of offending Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas because they were afraid that he might make dua against them. And there's an incident that took place in Iraq one time where there was someone, and Sa'id radiallahu anhu was a governor in Iraq under Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And, and other times he, he led delegations in Iraq and someone once cursed Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu in his presence. And Sa'id radiallahu anhu said, don't curse Ali or I'll curse you. And he continued to curse Ali radiallahu anhu. And Sa'id made dua against that man. And there are various narrations that say that a beast came into Iraq and we'd never seen that beast before. And it stomped that same man to death. So this was a guy that you really did not want to mess with. But you know what? That's not what I'm going to talk about today. What is the special quality we can extract from Sa'id? And you know what? amongst many, but I was thinking about this subhanAllah, as Muslim communities, what is it that we suffer with most? And someone would say it's ego, some would say that there's too much politics in the masjid, but you know what, the problem is not that there's too much politics in the masjid, the problem is, is that those people that should be productive sometimes engage themselves in negative politics and they don't do what they need to be doing, so they don't allow themselves to be productive. With Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he lived for a long time and he lived to see the fitna that took place when Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was murdered and the fitna that would follow after that. Now Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his approach, although he was someone who was possibly in line to become Khalifa, he was on the shura of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu to decide the next Khalifa, which was Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he decided that he wanted to avoid the negativity. And in fact, there's a narration from a man by the name of al Hussein ibn Kharija al-Ashja'i radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Uthman radiallahu anhu was murdered to give me a sign as to what I should do. So he said, I had this dream that I was between the dunya and I was between the akhirah. I was between the life of this world and I was between the hereafter. And I came across a group of malaika, a group of angels. So I met the angels and I asked them, where are the shuhada? Where are the martyrs? And he wanted to see Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So the malaika said, the, mar the martyrs are even higher. So he said that I went up and I was looking for the martyrs until I kept on going up and I met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi wasallam. So he says, I heard the conversation that was taking place between Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Ibrahim alayhi wasallam. So he says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to Ibrahim alayhi wasallam, istaghfir li ummati, make istighfar, seek forgiveness for my ummah. So, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in this dream, he says, you do not know what your ummah did after you left. They killed their imam and they started to spill each other's blood. So Ibrahim alayhi salam that sense of, said something very powerful in this dream of Hussein ibn Kharij radiallahu anhu. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Ala fa'alu kama fa'ala Khalili Sa'id. He said, I wish they would have done as my Khalil, my close friend. Now, Ibrahim alayhi salam is the close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ibrahim alayhi salam is saying, I wish they would do as my close friend Sa'id had done. So al Hussein woke up radiallahu anhu and he went immediately to Sa'id radiallahu anhu to tell him about the dream. So what was Sa'id doing while this was taking place? Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu decided to buy some sheep and to avoid the fitna altogether and to raise sheep avoiding all of the politics, avoiding all of the negativity. So al Hussein ibn Kharija, he went to Sa'id to tell him about this dream. So Sa'id radiallahu anhu fariha, he became so happy. 
He was so happy and overjoyed and he said, what a loser a person would be if Ibrahim السلام, would not take him as a Khalid. So Hussein said, I took this dream to mean that I should seek advice from you. So Hussein said to him, what should I do? So Sa'ad radiallahu anhu said, do you have any sheep? He said, no. He said, go buy some sheep and busy yourself with your sheep until the fitna is over. Now, does that mean that Sa'ad radiallahu anhu became unproductive? I mean, after this entire life of, of, uh, of good deeds, of striving with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, of fighting alongside the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, of spreading the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all over the world, does that mean that Sa'ad radiallahu anhu took a back seat and said, when this is all done, then I'll go back to being productive? No, and in fact, we can find a very interesting narration that Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu actually went to China. Sa'ad went to China in the year 650 and he actually met with the emperor there and he actually built a, a masjid in Guangzhou, which is in Guangzhou, which is actually still, and I know I'm butchering it, so I'm sorry if you're from China, but Guangzhou, and he built that masjid there almost 1400 years ago. Until today, that masjid is still there and Sa'ad radiallahu anhu proceeded to do da'wah in China until he found that the fitna had calmed down. Then he came back and he continued to do the good deeds that he was doing before. So the point that I want to draw from all of this is just because, so the quality that we can take from all of this is persistence and being productive. Sa'ad radiallahu anhu insisted on being productive, productivity, da'wah. If you truly have sincerity and if you truly have a passion, nothing will stop you from doing good. Faf'alu al-khayrat, so go ahead and do good deeds whenever you can. If you're living in a community where you have some negativity, where there are two uncles that are cursing each other out or where this group of people is calling this group of people deviant and this group of people is calling this group of people deviant or people have shut, the, shut you out of the masjid because you're too young and, and they don't think you have anything to offer, you will never let anyone allow you to keep you out of the da'wah if you are truly sincere. So we learn from this great companion radiallahu ta'ala anhu that truly the one who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always find a way to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have no excuse whatsoever because the opportunities for the da'wah to serve the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, are unlimited. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be like this great companion Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu and to implement this advice um, in our lives. Inshallah ta'ala, next week we'll continue with another one of the superstars, the 10 promised paradise. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.